All right, so for this task, you guys are, are basically trying to use completing the square to write, right, um, a quadratic equation in standard form in vertex form, okay? So let's take a look where it starts. Um, so uh, you guys can go ahead and read that. Um, and basically, they give you this new, right, uh, function in vertex form. And it tries to describe the area of it. So when it says fully describe the parabola that Jenny has been assigned to, right, if you look at the transformations, it's a parabola whose vertex, right, would be at 3, 4, meaning it opens up, it moves right, and goes up 4 units, okay? So with this in mind, when we get this new parabola or this new graph, right, this is what we call standard form, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. All right. And if you look at it, it's hard to determine where the vertex for this function is. OK, but wait a minute. Is this the area of a perfect square? Use your work from part one of this task to answer Jenny's question or justify your answer. So basically what they're saying is if you take the x squared minus 6x, think about this. If we take two, 6 divided by 2 and square it, what do we get? We get 9. So it would be plus 9. Doesn't that match up? So we could rewrite this. So we could really write this equation real easy as y equals x minus 3 all squared. Okay. Now, it says, I think I've figured out how to change the form of my quadratic so that I can graph the parabola. My Jenny's equation is y equals x squared minus 6x plus 9. She wants to change it to this new form, which is what we've learned, vertex form, and graph the parabola. So y equals, we said that this is equivalent to x minus 3 all squared. And right away now, we know the vertex would be at 3, 0. And that I'd be able to go ahead and graph it no problem. Okay, due to time, I'm going to move on. So completing the square, the other day we learned, right? Uh, it says complete the square to find the two equivalent equations for the following orders. So we said, what do we do to, what do we add? To make this a perfect square well we take that middle term 24 divided by 2 and square it and we would get 144. so do me a favor here try b c and d come back and check your answers so the next one we were going to take 8 divided by 2 square it and we would add 4 squared which is 16. then Half of 10 is 5. 5 squared is 25. So we would go ahead and add 25 to this. Okay. And the last one, x squared plus 6x. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is plus 9. So the next quadratic to uh, graph on Jenny's homework is y equals x squared plus 4x plus 2. Does this expression fit the pattern for a perfect square? Why or why not? Well, if I take half of 4 and square it, I get 2 squared, which is 4. Right? Does that match up with the plus 2? It doesn't. So this, right, this function right here, oh, I didn't want to do that. Right, that function right there is a quadrat or is a quadratic but not a perfect square you cannot write that as some binomial square so it says here use an area model to figure out how to complete the square so that it can be written in this vertex form okay so again we have two forms here one form is vertex form and the other one is standard form Standard is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Vertex form is y equals 
right? A times X minus H all squared plus some K. Okay, is the equation you have written um, equivalent to the original equation? If not, what adjustments need to be made and why? Um, so looking at this, <clears throat> how could we do this? If I want to create the area model, I'm going to start just by focusing on, if I do y equals x squared plus 4x plus 2. If I start with my square, I'm going to focus on this part right here. So if I have x squared, I know I have x and I have x, but then I have four x's. And if I put one, two on this side, two on this side, right? Now I have to figure out what I have to put here, right, to make it a perfect square. Well, I only have two here. That's not going to be enough because how many do I need? I need four. So if you think here, right, right away, this part here, this part here will actually come out to factor, if this is a perfect square, plus 2 plus 2 y equals x plus 2 all squared but what do I do to this 2 here right this is the part I don't, I don't know what to do so here's what we have to think about right how much should I have to add here I had to add 4 in right but I only had 2 right therefore what am I I'm negative 2 remaining right I was too short so I would subtract the two now here's how it works out algebraically okay so if I had y equals x squared plus 4x what I'm going to do is do x squared plus 4x to complete the square what would I have to add here 4 divided by 2 all squared would give me plus 4 but if I add a 4 in, I'm adding 4 to the problem, which changes the value. So right away, I have the plus 4 I just added. I have the minus 2, or sorry, the plus 2 that was at the end of my problem. But to keep the same expression, what do I, if I add the 4, I have to subtract the 4 also. Because Adding 4 and subtracting 4 is the same as adding 0, right, which ends up not changing the value. So what does this part become now? It becomes y equals x plus 2 all squared. And then what does this simplify to? 2 minus 4 is minus 2. Now, I know that's probably a little confusing. Right, and we're gonna go ahead and do some more quick examples. Okay, you guys know how to graph that, so I'm not gonna go through that. The next one says use an area model um, on the following quadratic, right? Um, <clears throat> so if I go to use the area model, say on this one, I have 10x. So if I start with my square, I know I have to add five x's to each side. Okay, so I add the five on each side. So how many singles would I have to put in here, right, to complete the square? I know it's gonna be 25, right? So right away, I know this function is gonna change to x plus five all squared, but I added the 25, I need 25 of these, I only have eight, so do I have 17 more or 17 in the negatives so I have negative 17 squares left okay if that doesn't make sense don't worry about it let's talk about how we would do this algebraically okay so this is using the area model now if I wanted to do this algebraically I'm going to start with x squared plus 10x plus I'm going to add something and whatever I add, I'm going to go ahead and subtract it, okay? 
Well, what do I have to add here to complete this square? Well, 10 divided by 2, all squared, would give me 25. So if I add 25 here, I have to subtract 25. And now what you have to recognize, this is that perfect square. What binomial squared would give me x squared plus 10x plus 25? It would be x plus 5, all squared. And then what is 8 minus 25? Minus 17. And that is what you would get. So I personally just care about you guys being able to do these algebraically, but I want you guys to understand the area model and how it can be used. Let's look at the next one. Okay, I'm going to go from standard form to vertex form by completing the square. So first thing I do, x squared plus 8x plus, what am I going to have to add? I'm going to take 8 divided by 2, square it. It's going to give me 4 squared, which is 16. Now, I added 16 to complete this square. I have my minus 6, but whatever I added here, I also have to go and subtract 16. So right away, this part translates to y equals, what is x squared plus 8x plus 16 going to give me? x plus 4 all squared, then negative 6 minus 16 is minus 22. Okay, um, letter C, right? So in this case, y equals x squared minus 12x plus something plus that 7 and subtract whatever I add. Well, what is half of 12? 12 divided by 2 all squared gives me 36. So I'm going to add 36. Whatever I add here, I'm going to go ahead and subtract on the outside. So y equals, what does this translate to is a perfect square? x, since that's a minus sign, it's going to be minus, what was 12 divided by 2? 6 all squared. And then 7 minus 36 is minus 29. And we are done. Okay. The next one, right, again, it's no different than what we've been doing. X squared minus 6X. I'm going to add some amount to complete the square. I have my minus 5. And whatever I add, I got to subtract. So half of 6 squared is 9. Add 9, subtract 9. This translates to Y equals the quantity X minus 3 all squared. Then negative 5 minus 9 would be minus 14. Now you're probably wondering why we have to do this, right? When you first look at all of these initial standard forms, is it easy to see the vertex? No. But when we go ahead and complete the square, now I can take this equation and say the vertex is going to be at negative 4, negative 22. The vertex is going to be at 6, negative 29. Vertex is at 3, negative 14. Okay, that's where we're going with this. Okay, now if it's an odd number, it's a little different. Okay, so this one, the only difference is this middle term is an odd number. So g of x in this case, right, I'm going to do x squared plus 7x plus, if I take 7 divided by 2 and square it, Remember, 7 halves squared is 7 halves times 7 halves, which gives you 49 over 4. Okay, but then I have the plus 10, but then whatever I add there, I got to subtract. And this is what I get. So right away now, this part here, this should be the easy part. G of X is equal to, that's going to turn into X plus right? If I look, what did I cut in half? I cut 7 in half, so it's just x plus 7 halves, all squared. And then if I were to um, add or subtract these, that would be 40 over 4 minus 49 over 4, which would give me minus 9 over 4. And you could also do that in the calculator. Okay, go ahead, attempt a homework.
And if you have any questions, I will spend time, as much time on Tuesday as needed. Okay, thank you.